I think that's probably a little bit better. What's going on, y'all? Hey, uh, I don't know if you know, but there was a particular interview that happened between Lester Holt and our president, current president. He's sure doing a lot of media right now, isn't he? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to tell you the truth. But for the most part, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna review the whole interview because y'all can get on there and check this interview out yourself. But there is a couple things I, I just want to address within a two minute period here that I'm sure I'll draw out to close to five, eight, ten minutes. <laughs> Which I'm sure that'll make everybody real happy anyways so what i most important thing is i, I, I don't know if, if y'all knew there was an interview that went on between lester holt and the president and i gotta hand it to you lester holt really threw out some good questions and really i think put the old man on point and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start this and just let this go and uh I will interject soon. Thank you for sitting down with us. There's a lot to talk about. I'd like to start with the horrible events of last weekend. It has shocked a lot of Americans. A political rally, your opponent, Donald Trump, uh, shot uh, in the middle of greeting his his supporters. Um, You spoke to Mr. Trump afterward. Can you give me a a sense of that conversation? Very cordial. I told him how concerned I was and wanted to make sure I knew. Joe Lico, he was actually Lico, doing Lico okay? he sounded good he said he was fine and he thanked me for calling him i told him he was literally in the prayers of jill and me and i hope his whole family was weathering this well let's talk about the conversation this has started and it's really about language what we say out loud and the consequences of those you called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago you said it's time to put trump in the bullseye there's some dispute about the, the context but i think you appreciate I didn't say crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Okay. So the first thing is, is that he he didn't say crosshairs. Which I really don't think that had much to do with the question at hand whatsoever. It had to do more with the bigger bigger picture of here of putting the bullseye on Trump. And I would think that in any type of uh, uh, position of, of a president or something like that, especially uh, as uh, big of a stage you have, probably the most important thing that you want to be able to do is to maybe just say, yeah, maybe it was a poor word, uh, choice of words, and I'm sorry, let's move on. But in typical Joe fashion manner, here we go. Here comes the spin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's. Uh, agenda. Yeah, the term is bullseye. God bless, God bless Lester Holt right there. <laughs> but the term was bullseye. Love, you know. So listen to this. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't. I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus, focus on, on him. what he's doing. Focus on on his on his policies. Focus Lest, on lust right there. That's a look of a man that ain't buying it. <laughs> Lester is not buying it right here, ladies and gentlemen. I, 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 I'm I, just I, I'm just saying. The number of lies he told in the debate, focus. I mean, there's there's a whole range of things that, look, I'm not the guy that said <clears throat> I want to be a dictator on day one. That's a lie, too, by the way. That's 100% a lie. Trump never said, I mean, he did say he was going to be a dictator day one, and, and, and that's that's the political nomenclature that just gets used for coming through and cleaning house and being done with it. But no, they want to hang this whole argument that he's going to be a dictator through the whole part of his See Now this is his whole, his whole presidency. And this is the language right here. This is the language right there that they're trying to say that needs to be toned down. And are they toning down whatsoever? Hell no. Fuck no. Listen, what happens here now? Listen, listen. I'm not the guy that refused to accept the outcome of the election. Ah, oh, Jesus, but you're the, you're the guy that's refusing to leave that. Leave. Leave now. You're the guy that's refusing to step down now, by the way. I'm not the guy who said that one not accept the outcome of this election automatically. You can't only love your country when you win. Mr. President, you- 
<laughs> that right there, ladies and gentlemen. Did you hear what Joe Biden just said right there? Did you? Let, let's. I, I gotta try that again. Country, when you. I gotta do that. Hold, hold on here. You can't only love your country when you win. Oh, Especially you've been in politics a very long. Un unbelievable. Absolutely, just unbelievable. The. Uh, <laughs> okay. Long time, so let, let's speak frankly. We're all adults here. Yep. Has this Somewhat. shooting changed the trajectory of this race? I don't know, and you don't know either. I don't know, but, no, but no, have you I, something I, you've given I, thought to? No, I, I've thought less about the <laughs> Several days later. Vice President get in terms of, uh, look. Whoa, uh, here we go. Here we, we've. There, just completely lost his train of thought. Joe's got just too much, too much going through. I'm gonna put the typewriting sound in right now. Emotional, damn it! I just, it's just got too much going on here. So here we go. I've never seen a circumstance where you ride through certain rural areas of the country and people have signs there, stand big Trump signs with a middle sign saying F Biden and the little kid standing there putting up his middle finger. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that is just. Okay. What we just threw with, he's complaining about signs and stuff on the side of the road and with kids st and standing by, as opposed to a father that just got done killed being at a rally supporting Trump being there. Just the God bless that firefighter. I, it just breaks my heart that so, somebody would take make this a family outing and turn it into something like this, and then for him to say that he's appalled because of the signs and stuff. What about all the writing? What about all the different stuff that's been going on between? You know what I'm talking about. And he's got the balls to be able to say that, that we're the ones who are holding up the signs and how hateful that is. Just unbelievable. Inflammatory and a kind of viciousness. It's a very different thing to say. Look, I really disagree with Trump's... And I asked him about his struggle in the debate and the calls from some oh Democrats boy. for him to step aside. Here we Do you go. feel like you've weathered the storm on, on this issue of whether you should be on the ticket or not? Look, 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee. <laughs> we were stuck in a freaking pandemic. Where is that vote? Where is that vote? In the Democratic Party, okay? I listen to them. In your last TV interview, you were asked if you had watched the debate. Your answer was, I don't think so, no. Have you... <laughs> I don't think so, no. How do you put How do you put something out there that we go to, I don't think so, no? Hmm. On a national stage against Trump, and I'm not sure if I watched... Hmm. Hmm. You since seen it? I've seen pieces of it. I've not watched the whole debate. The president also responding to news of Donald Trump's new vice presidential That's it. pick. I want to ask you about uh, oh, just no right before you and I sat down, former President Trump named his vice presidential pick J.D. Vance. And what I like to pick about J.D. Vance is because every single one of them, yes, he's a Trump hater. Yes, he said did things. They all did stupid shit. We all were all, the, the political uh, arena, uh, the game itself was, was completely different back in 2015 to what it's uh, evolved it to the evil root, rooted uh, system that it is now. But yeah, he was a hater. And what I think was the best uh, at a Trump hater at one particular time, but at, you know, Trump was a Democrat at one time. Uh, uh, but I think what's, affirms that this selection of J.D. Vance, Vance Electric, remember that? Vance Air Conditioning from the office? Uh, but uh, Vice President Vance is a great choice because every single one of these on the left right now is completely losing their minds about him. Gonna, uh, just do, uh, losing their minds. So with the fact of the left losing their mind over a choice like this, confirms what a great selection it is. Great story. Guy's got history. It's it's something so worth looking, but we're getting off into what we're the original discussion here was. What does that tell you, uh, his qualities? What does that tell you about uh, former President Trump's values in terms of 
who he will surround himself with in the next administration should he win? Well, it's not unusual. He's going to surround himself with people who agree with, completely with him. Have a voting record. Just like you, Kamala Harris, uh, everybody else, the whole system, the justice system, not justice, but so well, some some states, but thank God that's not the Supreme Court, but just like everything, that's what you do. That's what you do as a politician. You surround yourself with people that support you. Damn it. Record, I support him. Even though if you go back and listen to the things that J.D. Vance said uh, about Trump. Yeah. <laughs> and the president had a lot more to say. But he also said a lot more Senator stuff Rick. as well, too. And this is just, just kind of the, the short snippet of what this was and about. We asked him about the Secret Service. and Yeah, and there's, there's a, a lot more discussion to be had here. But I'm telling you guys, please take the time to watch some of this, this stuff. Because the conversation that comes out of this old man's, man's mouth is absolutely ridiculous. And I think it's us to be uh, uh, well-informed as voters. Whether it's your first time, last time, second time, third, eighth, whatever, how many times it is, it's important to be informed and really to listen to the marble mouth conversation that that he has, uh, you know, really to want us to tone down the uh, uh, what's the word to, to, to uh, tone down the vocabulary of you know uh, not being so mean and hateful and all this stuff when he's still the one that's casting all those stones and doing all that stuff to where that threat to democracy still th says that about him. I mean, it's just talking out of both sides of their mouth, but do yourselves a favor, y'all. Watch this. You have your own opinion. I hope you guys know that this is out there. A lot of information, a lot of news going on. It's crazy out there, so I'm just here to hopefully help you be able to get you that knowledge in the right direction. All right, as Chef always says, deuces.